I look again for you. Hi there, could I get one apple fritter? One apple fritter? And one sour cream glazed. Yeah. And one medium steep tea with one milk. Will that be everything? That's all. Thank you. We'll see you at the window. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Here you go, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye you bye. too. Bye. So I thought I would get out with the camera today. take some photos with the RB67 at Riverview of the trees and all their glory because leaves have opened but I do have a purpose and that purpose is to shoot two rolls of Ilford Panaf and I'm going to develop one of them in uh, D23 one to one I love that combination. Or pardon me, D23 1 to 3. That's normally how I develop the Pan F. And then I'm going to develop the other roll in D23 diluted 1 to 10, spiked with sodium hydroxide. I've heard a lot of good things about that. It's supposed to show a little bit more grain, a little bit more acuteness, more edge effects. <sighs> So finally I have that opportunity to do that. And it's a wonderful day. It's not pouring rain like it has been. I'm talking buckets of rain. All the leaves are open in their glory. It's wonderful. So I did, there are clouds. So I will be dealing with the sun one minute and no sun, at, sun the next. I would like to photograph with the sun out. And I think I'm going to start with my five maples over here but before I do that I got to finish this donut I'll use my 50 millimeter picked up a bit. Wait a minute, that's not my 50 millimeter. Is it? Yes it is. That was my 90 for a second. This will allow me to get in close, which I want to do. I overemphasize this tree. All right, I shoot, normally shoot Pan F at an EI of 25 with the D23-1-3. Now, apparently the sodium hydroxide gives it a little bit of a boost. I wonder how much that's it's going to affect the uh, film speed. I think I'm going to shoot it at EI, both rolls at EI-25 anyways. It's kind of nice, soft light it's enveloping everything the shadows are quite bright contrast looks about normal to me this is probably the darkest area here even though it's not that dark maybe on the ground second at f22 and a half that tree is probably a lot brighter one second at 22 Oh, that one's darker over there. This one. Right there. Took readings here. Three stops brighter than here. And then the road way over there was five stops brighter than here. So, so I'm going to do F 16 and a half at four seconds with the yellow filter. So I need to check my reciprocity for four seconds with an F. Well... I don't think it's much of an increase at four seconds. 
That's a five second exposure. Okay. And now I'll switch to the other back of pan. That's looking pretty good. Hey everybody, welcome to my dark room. That is the roll that received uh, D23 diluted. One, two, three. Now I'm going to do the D23 diluted one to ten with a little bit of sodium hydroxide in it. I'm going to go mix that right now. Okay, here's the diluted D23. And now I'm going to put in the hydroxide de soda. Be really careful using this stuff because it can heat up our solution. But I'm using a little bit, 0.2 grams. And I'll put that in. I'm going to check the temperature, see how much it went up. Yeah, it's gone up about a degree. So I'm going to try and cool that down. I've got the timer set for 18 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to agitate constantly for the first 30 seconds. And then I'm going to let it sit for two minutes and then I'll agitate it for five seconds. And I'll just repeat that for the duration of the time. Start the timer and agitate. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for two minutes and then I'll agitate it again. So, why don't you guys come back when I'm fixing. Here is the spent developer. It's really yellow. I had to be really careful I didn't put this beside my uh, stop bath because the stop bath is exactly the same color. We are in the photo flow. Let's see what we got. Definitely has a different color, color I think. Tone of the negative appears to be blue, but I'm not exactly sure. Film base looks stained, yellow. Seems to be rubbing off when I rub it. What the heck is that? Look at that. It's coming off. That's really weird. Never ever seen that on a film before. I wonder what caused that. I'm gonna keep washing the film and then I'm gonna hang it up to dry and take a closer look at them. Okay, here we have the negatives. This the ones on the left are the this D23 spiked with sodium hydroxide, and this is D23, one to three. There's quite a difference, wouldn't you say? Let's look at the film base first. Because if you re remember when I pulled the film out, the uh, sodium hydroxide spiked film. The base was yellow, but it rubbed off with my fingers. It's very strange. I've never experienced that before. I would love to know the cause of that staining that came off easily with my fingers. So you can see the base fog is much higher than 
the D23 1 to 3 and I'm going to take readings with my densitometer in a minute just to confirm that. You can see the D23 1 to 3 negatives are a lot cleaner. Uh, the EI of 25 looks quite nice. The EI25 with the spike D23, I would say 25 is probably too much exposure. So it probably it's it might be better at maybe 40. I would have to shoot another test roll just to confirm that. But you can see it's a lot denser overall in the shadows. You look along the stairs. Right, it's very, very different, a lot more density. So, let's take a densitometer reading. I'll zero that out. So the spike to T23, 0.24, and the D D23, 1 to 3, 0 0.09, very different. I'm going to take these negatives upstairs and I'm going to scan them in and take a closer look because I really want to see how much the spiked D23's grain was affected and overall sharpness. See how this roll turned out. Well, they look pretty good, and there's no yellow stain this time. 